All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson nine. And in this lesson, um, in contrast with the, some previous lessons where we were using multiplication to show how two fractions were equivalent, now we're going to begin a series of lessons where we are going to be using division to show that two fractions are equivalent equivalent. And really, this makes sense. Because if you think about it, let's take a look at one half and three sixths. Now we know that one half is equivalent to three sixths because one times three is three and two times three is six. And because both the numerator and the denominator are being multiplied by three, we know that the two fractions are equivalent. Well, think about that equal sign. We can reverse the numbers on that equal sign uh, because it doesn't matter. It's kind of like saying 3 plus 4 is equal to 7 or 7 is equal to 3 plus 4. You can do either way, right? So that means if we kind of do that same switcho with the fractions, we get 3 sixths on the left and we get 1 half on the right. And now we can think about division and we can say, oh, look at that. 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 6 divided by 3 is 2, and therefore these two fractions are equal, because we already know they're equal using the multiplication argument, which means the division argument must be working as well, right? Now that's a little fancy, and for this lesson we're really just going to be limited not to that standard algorithm quite yet. We're just going to be using the area model at this point to build the argument so that when students are ready to learn that standard algorithm, they'll believe it and they'll understand it. So let's get going. So we're going to begin with this problem here and it says we're going to look at the fraction first off and we're going to look at the, all the small um, little fractional units first and we can see that that is four eighths. All right. Now we can see that right here and right here that means 4 eighths is equivalent to 1 half. All right. Now, what is the division sentence that says so? Well, we've got 4 and 8, and we can see that 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2, and that means 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1, and there is our division statement that says that these two fractions are equivalent because we divided both the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. And just by logic, we can see, hey, look at that, 4 eighths is the same thing as 1 half. And uh, the geometry says so, and the geometry matches our numbers. So here it says, compose the shaded fractions into larger fractional units, basically meaning uh, let's represent that using division. So basically they're saying let's combine pieces together so that we've got larger fractional units. So let's do B. And so we're going to start with B and we're going to see that we're going to begin with two tenths. Now how did I get two tenths? Because two little pieces are shaded in and we have ten pieces total, so two tenths. And then we can see that if we were to combine pieces together. Oh, let's say um, these guys go together, these guys go together, these guys go together, these guys go together, and these guys go together. Suddenly, we now have fifths. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we now have fifths all right, and we now have fifths, and only that first one was shaded in, so it's two-tenths is equal or equivalent to one-fifth. Now, what's the division statement that says so? Well, we start with that two and the ten, and we can see that ten divided by two gives us five, and two divided by two gives us one, and therefore two-tenths is equivalent to one-fifth, simply because our geometry says so, that we originally had two-tenths, this guy and this guy out of ten were shaded in, and then ended up, when we combined them, it became one 
out of five. So here it says in the first area model show four eighths. In the second area model we're going to show six twelfths. Show how both fractions can be composed or renamed as the same unit fraction. Now here I got to tell you this one's kind of tricky uh, because when we've got four eighths, so there's pretty much one way to get four eighths. We're going to say, okay, we're going to cut it into fourths, and then we're going to cut it in half, and there are our four eighths. One, two, three, four. Now, um, over here, how are we going to get six twelfths? Well, this is a little on the tricky side. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to begin by cutting it into sixths. And then I'm going to cut it this way again. And if I want to shade in six twelfths, it's going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now show how both fractions can be composed or renamed as the same unit fraction. So, we, well, we can see that we've got, we begin here with 4 eighths. But if we wanted to, we can combine these together. And then we can combine these together. And suddenly we get one, well, I'm going to put it right here, one half. So 4 eighths becomes 1 out of 2, 1 half. In the same fashion over here, we're going to start with 6 twelfths, and we can see, well, if I group these 6 together and these 6 together, I get 1 half. So both 4 eighths and 6 twelfths equal 1 half. Now down here, we're supposed to show the division to kind of like prove that it's true. So we're saying 4 eighths is equal to 1 half. Well, let's show it. So we've got 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. So therefore, 4 eighths is equivalent to 1 half simply because we divided both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, in this case, 4. And we could do the same thing with 6 twelfths. 6 twelfths is equivalent to 1 half. How do we know? Because I can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 6, and in both cases it works out. So 6 divided by 6 is 1, woohoo! And 12 divided by 6 is 2, woohoo! And that tells us that 6 twelfths is equivalent to 1 half. So parents and teachers, you should be seeing the standard algorithm right here. This is the standard algorithm, but we're doing it simply because the geometry makes sense and it says so. This is not just a rule that our students are blindly following. And that wraps up 4th grade module 5 lesson 9, where students are seeing that you can begin with 1 fourth, and it's just like in previous lessons, well, if you multiply both the numerator and the denominator to make a true statement, so 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, so therefore 1 fourth is equivalent to 3 twelfths, well, if it works that way, then we can, whoa, then we can switch the fractions around and do essentially the same thing, only this time with division. We can say, hey, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 12 divided by 3 is 4, therefore 3 twelfths is equivalent to 1 fourth. And that wraps up this lesson.